Hi there. Most of the companies around the world are increasingly standardizing on Power BI to drive a data culture, which involves enabling managed self-service business intelligence or SSPI, rationalizing the delivery of enterprise BI and addressing economic pressures. So the main purpose of creating this series Migrate to Power BI is to help you guys or to provide your guidance on how to plan and conduct a migration from a third party tool to Power BI. As many of the companies have their own proprietary tools or they are using any third party tool. But if they are willing to migrate to Power BI, then what are the steps that you need to follow? What are those different levels or phases that you have to go through? So as a Power BI architect or as a Power BI developer, you should know what are those. So in this series, you would learn everything about those phases. So let's see what you're gonna learn in this series. The very first episode is going to be on Power BI migration overview, which is going to be this episode. In the next episode, we are going to talk about prepare to migrate to Power BI. That means what are all the pre-migration steps that you need to complete in order to start migration to Power BI. In the third episode, you would get to know how to gather requirements to migrate to Power BI. In the next one, you would get to know how you can plan deployment to migrate to Power BI. In the episode five, you would get to know how to conduct proof of concept to migrate to Power BI. And in the episode six, you would get to know how to create content to migrate to Power BI. Then in the next episode, that is episode seven, you would get to know how to deploy to Power BI. Over here, we are mainly going to talk about the Power BI services only. So please consider that this whole series is based on an assumption that we are going to use Power BI services. And in the last episode, you would get to know what are the best practices for Power BI migration. That means all those experiences from the different customers around the globe, like what were their challenges and how you can overcome those. So we are going to talk about that in our last episode. However, before going further, we have two assumptions over here. The number one, your organization has a legacy BI platform currently in place that we are trying to migrate to Power BI. And secondly, the decision has already been made for formally migrate content and users to Power BI. That is the second assumption that you have to keep in your mind. Now, we are going to have a look at the high level phases for deploying Power BI in your organization. So in order to do that, very first would be set up and evaluate the Power BI. So this first phase involves establishing the initial Power BI architecture where you are going to check upon your architecture, what would be your source, what is going to be your destination, which is going to be finally Power BI services in this case and how you are going to perform the ETL operations. Preliminary deployment and governance planning are handled at this point, that means at your very first stage, as well as Power BI evaluation, including return on investment or cost benefit analysis are also going to be done in this phase only. Then the second phase comes, create new solutions quickly in Power BI. In this second phase, Self-service BI authors can begin using and evaluating Power BI for their needs and value can be obtained from Power BI quickly. That means in this phase, you can prepare any POC or you can try it out into your organization. You can even take the advantage of Power BI trial licenses where you would receive all the features and benefits of Power BI Pro or Power BI Premium per user license benefits for 60 days if you sign up with your school or your organizational email address. Then in the next phase, we are going to talk about migrate BI assets from legacy platform to Power BI. This is going to be the focus of our whole series it is very important to know how you can migrate BI assets from your legacy system to Power BI. So everything about that we are going to talk in this phase only. Then we have adapt, govern and monitor Power BI, which is going to be the last phase. So once you have migrated your legacy system to Power BI, then you have to get to know how you can adapt the culture. That means Power BI culture into your organization. This final phase comprises 
ongoing activities such as nurturing a data culture, communication and training within your organization. And also remember that these activities greatly impact on effective Power BI implementation. So that's how you are going to divide your whole migrate to Power BI task into different phases. You would go through each and every phases. Then you can successfully migrate your legacy system to Power BI. Now let's talk about the different stages of a Power BI migration. Over here, we are going to discuss about the different stages of Power BI migration. Over here, we have total number of five stages that you have to go one by one in order to migrate assets from legacy system to Power BI. Phase three is going to be the focus of this whole series where we have five different stages of migration. So the very first is going to be preparation or pre-migration step. In the pre-migration step, there are certain actions you may consider prior to beginning a project to migrate content from a legacy BI platform to Power BI. This step typically includes the initial tenant level deployment planning. In our upcoming episode, we are going to talk more about prepare to migrate to Power BI where we are going to discuss everything about it. Then there is going to be very first stage where we are going to learn about how to gather requirements and prioritize them. The emphasis of this very first stage is on gathering information and planning for the migration of a single solution initially and scoped to a reasonable sized effort. The output of stage first includes a prioritized inventory of reports and data that are to be migrated. That means in this stage, you are going to get to know all the requirements that you have to do, all the reports that you have to migrate or other contents, maybe your dashboard, maybe your data sets. So everything is going to be included in this stage as a part of the requirement. And this is going to be input for stage two, where we have to plan for deployment. The output of this stage two includes as many specifics as possible to guide the process through it in an iterative, non-linear process. Creation of a proof of concept, which we are going to do in stage three, may occur in parallel with this stage. That means at the same time you are doing stage two plan for deployment, you can also start working on the proof of concept. And this proof of concept is going to address unknown and mitigate risk as early as possible. So first you have to focus on the pre-migration steps. Definitely we are going to discuss everything in our upcoming video that is episode 2. Then you have to gather all the requirements related to your all the reports, dashboards, data sets and maybe you have some other kind of data flows etc into your legacy system which you are going to migrate or deploy on Power BI services. Then we have stage 2 and stage 3. These two stages can be worked in parallel. So at the same time you are working on stage 2, you can also start working on stage 3. And in the stage 3, you are going to conduct proof of concept. Now moving forward to stage 4, where you create and validate. And what does that mean? Well guys, stage 4 is when the actual work to convert your POC or proof of concept to a production ready solution is done. Proof of concept is generally like our report or a dashboard only. But when you have to do it for multiple reports or you have to create a final solution which involves several reports, dashboards, etc., then it becomes a complete project or a solution that you have to deploy to your production. The output of this stage is a completed Power BI solution that has been validated in a development environment. It should be ready for deployment in stage five. So in stage five, we have to simply deploy it. And then if there's an issue coming, then we should have a support team or maybe some developers are there who are already working on that. And then we have to also monitor if any refresh is getting failed, something weird is happening, or maybe someone else need to monitor the resources that we are consuming on Power BI services. And you should also remember that from stage one to stage five, you can do the iterate for each solution being migrated to Power BI. So you can again and again perform the same in an iterative manner. Now what's next? 
In the next episode, we are going to discuss about how to prepare to migrate. This is going to be your pre-migration step. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. Please do connect with us if you have any question or concern. And if you are all here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest Power BI updates and videos. See you in the next video.